Hey, Mr. P here. Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmitz. And in this video, we're going to talk about types and benefits of biodiversity. In previous lectures, we've talked about what biodiversity is and we've hinted at why it's important. But in this case, we're gonna talk specifically about the benefits that it gives to ecosystems and our planet. So we measure biodiversity in a lot of different ways within ecosystems. We're going to identify three levels of biodiversity that you will need to know and be able to talk about. You can see them displayed on the screen here. The first smallest level, so within a population, so this is one group of a species that can reproduce within itself, uh, we have what we call genetic diversity, and that refers to the variation of genes within a population. An example of that could be the variation of skin color in humans. Mm -hmm. So you have a gene pool that you pull from that represents all of the possible options for that trait for that species. And we're going to talk later in the class about genetics and gene pools and more specificity. But for now, you just need to know that there are a variety of alleles or a variety of genes, different forms of genes that are available to a population. And not every organism in the population has the same set of genes and the same set of alleles, which contributes to differences in observed traits. And one thing to note about this level of diversity is that if you have a higher genetic diversity in a population, that population will be more able to adapt and therefore more resilient to change in an ecosystem. We'll be able to better withstand changes that occur like we talked about when things like succession or whatever, and they will be better able to overcome those challenges because they have a wider variety of traits to choose from in a population. And it's also important to note that genetic diversity, while it leads to differences in observed traits, physical traits, it also leads to differences in immunity and differences in just fitness in general. So um, it provides a greater wealth of survivorship traits, if you will. So our next level is species diversity. And this is probably the one that you think of when you hear the term biodiversity. Species diversity refers to the total number of different species in an area. So when we go out into nature and we count the number of species in this portion of the forest and we define an area and we go out and we do a physical count and we say there were 11 species of plants and seven insect species and two secondary consumers and so on, what we are doing is measuring the species diversity. So when you go out and you measure biodiversity at the species level uh, and you get a higher species diversity, we're looking at the number of different species. There's also a term called evenness, which is a measure of the relative populations within the community. So you can look at the number of lions, the number of tigers, and the number of bears um, in an ecosystem. Oh my. Oh my, yes. But when you do that, what that tells you is that ecosystems with a higher species diversity are also more resilient because you have more organisms and more different species to fill throw back to a previous lecture here, to fill possible niches in an ecosystem. So if one species goes extinct, you have more options to fill that niche and possess that role within the ecosystem still. The final level is the largest level, which we call ecosystem diversity. Ecosystem diversity refers to the variety of habitats on earth or within the biosphere. And, and if you think back to the levels of organization, remember you have individual organisms that lead to populations, which lead to communities, which lead to ecosystems. And so when we get to that level, we are talking about the number of different ecosystems that feed into specific biomes, which lead into the biosphere like you talked about. And so to kind of summarize all of that, having more ecosystems on Earth, having a greater diversity of ecosystems allows for a higher number of species on Earth. As we as humans impact the environment, we're actually starting to lose some ecosystems and expand other ecosystems like the desert, which might have a lower diversity. And so what you're seeing is that with more ecosystems, you have more species. And if we negatively impact those ecosystems, we will lose species. Which is a bad thing. Correct. All three of these are the, the three types of biodiversity or the three levels of biodiversity we're going to focus on in this class. All three have their importance. All three are at different levels. All three maybe impact the world in slightly different ways and, and impact humans in slightly different ways, but all three are equally important when we talk biodiversity. So speaking of the importance of biodiversity, we're going to finish today's lecture by talking about some benefits that biodiversity provides. 
Some of them are benefits to nature. Some of them are benefits to humans specifically, things that we get from a biodiverse world. So let's jump into it. So in this particular graphic, all of these are what we call ecosystem services, which are the services that ecosystems provide us. It's broken into three categories. We have natural resources, which are physical resources we get from the earth, which are things like water, land, soil, and air. All of those are part of what we call the biosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, geosphere, if you remember back from previous lectures. And then we have benefits that these particular ecosystem services provide people. And then we have what we call drivers of change, which are things that can drive change within an ecosystem, which impacts both natural resources and benefits to humans. Right. So that bottom third is really referring to what's going to impact the natural resources and the benefits that we get, either positively or negatively. So they could be a positive impact to creating more resources, or they could be a negative impact taking away some benefits or resources that we have. So to just look at some examples, let's uh, shift over to the benefits section. This is kind of what we get. We get a stronger economy, a better well-being. Uh, we obviously get food and materials and medicines and that last one there, public health, refers to the, the medicinal value that we get from nature. All of these things are things that we get out of nature and out of resources. So economy-wise, obviously goods and products are produced from nature that contribute to our economy. Our well-being, there's a cultural value in nature. You go out and you go boating on the lake or you go fishing. We get one, a monetary value from things like fishing and hunting licenses, but also you being in nature and going and exercising in natural environments provides a well-being. But also nature provides things like pure air and cleaner water. Uh, and so that contributes to our well-being as well. Yep. And then food, water, minerals, nutrients, materials in general come out of our natural resources, our natural resources, and obviously give us a benefit for a nutritional standpoint. And then public health, a lot of the medicinal values or med medicines in general come out of natural products. Even organisms like bacteria and fungus can also give us different antibiotics. Right. Medicine began through foraging in nature and has obviously expanded into the, the medical fields that we know today, but it began by finding natural compounds in the environment that provided benefits to us. And so to finish up, looking back at the bottom section of this with the drivers of change, these are really the things that we need to take into account as humans as a way to ensure that all of these goods and services are continuing to be provided by ecosystems. And so some of those things are policy. Those are the choices that we make in our governments that allow for areas to be protected or funds to go towards certain things. The climate, obviously, um, climate change is in the forefront of a lot of discussions and understanding how we are impacting our natural environments with things like pollution and our choices in land use. So as we take more natural area for things like cities and roads, highways, farms, all of those things impact what we can benefit from the natural environment. And so understanding how our choices impact nature and then how that impacts what we can benefit from those natural ecosystems is going to be critical for the success of of our goods and services moving forward. And lucky for us, we as humans have a brain and have a conscious and can form logical thought. And so we can use that to our advantage on how we allocate these natural resources and write our policies to ensure that we have natural resources in the future. Absolutely. That's all we have for you guys today. Thank you so much. Enjoy the video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. See ya.